In this video you will learn what is RTK query or Redux Toolkit query and how it can solve your needs. And the first question is what is RTK query? And actually this is an additional package inside library Redux Toolkit which allows us to simplify fetching of data. And if you are familiar for example with React Query or Apollo, it is going in similar direction, because it simplifies fetching data, caching them, invalidating and reusing. And in this video I won't talk about Redux Toolkit itself, which actually means if you don't have enough knowledge of Redux Toolkit and you maybe know just basic Redux, I highly recommend you to check my other video and I will link it in the description box below. And to understand RTK query, let's look on my example. As you can see here, I already prepared a small project. Here we have a list of our users. We can just type a new user and hit at user and voila, this user is there. And actually we are saving this information on the backend, which means we are making API requests. This is why I can reload the page and all these users are still there. So let's look on the code. And here I leveraged usage of Redux Toolkit. As you can see here I have a provider. And here inside store we are configuring a store with our reducer for users. Now let's look inside features, users. And here we have three different things. First of all we have our users component, then users API and users slice. And if we will jump inside users API, you can see two methods. First of all, get users and secondly, create user. And now if we will jump inside user slice, you can see the typical reducer of Redux toolkit. First of all, here on the bottom, we have our user slice where we're changing our data. And inside our initial state, we have data for the list of our users is loading and error. And this is the typical way how we store some data from the backend. So we're using data to render them on the screen. We're using is loading to see the loading indicator. And we're using here error to show the error message to our customer. And here we have a bunch of reducers with pending and fulfilled to change this data property is loading and an error. Also here on the top we have get users async, which creates for us async thang and create user, which uses inside this create user function from the API and just responds with the data. Now the only thing that we have inside our component is dispatch and here we are dispatch and creating of our user and we also use a selector to select users data from our Redux. And this is why here we can open inspector and jump inside Redux itself. And as you can see here are two requests, users get users pending, fulfilled, and here is our data inside store. So now we're reading this data from the store and we're rendering them on the screen. This is exactly how we implement working with API inside Redux Toolkit. But now we're talking about RTK query or Redux Toolkit query. What we can get from it to write less code. And this is exactly the idea. It allows us to write less code just because we're fetching the data, making the loading indicators and error messages again and again. For example, as you can see here in motivation, we're getting loading states, we're avoiding duplicate requests, we have out of the box optimistic updates, and we're getting caching out of the box. And actually here I don't want to show you dry documentation, I just want to convert our project with Redux Toolkit to usage of RTK query. And most importantly is that we don't need to install additional libraries, we're getting this query inside Redux Toolkit, but obviously it is tree shaked out when we're not using it. But now we want to use it and the first thing that I want to do is completely remove this user slice. And actually as you can see we wrote here 53 lines of code just to implement this storage of data is loading and error. And this is why I want to fully remove this file and also I want to remove this thing with axios and our promises. We don't need it anymore. So for now we have just our component and here inside source features I want to create a new folder which is called API and inside the new file which is called API slice.js. And the main idea is for RTK query we are describing a single slice inside our Redux, which actually means we can continue using Redux to dispatch our actions and store some data inside Redux. But additionally we have a special slice which will implement Redux query. 
And in order to do that, we must import here on the top a new function which is called create API, and we are calling it from our Redux toolkit slash query slash React. And actually you can use it also without React, but inside React it is even better because we are getting hooks to use RTK query out of the box. Our next step here is to create a slice. This is why here let's create a new property which is called API slice and we want to call here our create API function. And now inside what we want first of all to pass is our reducer path. And here we can simply write API. And this is exactly what I said. This is our slice of the whole data that this package will store inside our Redux state. After this, we must provide here a base query. So what is base query? This is the definition of our API URL. And here we want to write fetch base query and we're getting it also from query react. And actually fetch base query is a function and we're providing an object inside with field base URL and in our case it will be localhost 3004. After that we're defining endpoints that we want to use. This is why here we have a property endpoints and here we're getting a function with just one argument which is a builder. And here we must return an object with some endpoints. And the first endpoint that I want to implement is get users because we were fetching users from our API. This is exactly this API, localhost 3004 slash users, and this is the array of data. So how we can define it? We are writing here get users, it can be any name, and here we want to do builder.query. And just like for example in Apollo client, we are using query when we want to request some data and we are writing mutations when we do some changes, for example creating, updating or deleting. This is why here we are writing builder query and we must provide inside an object. And here we are saying that our query gets a function which return users. So what exactly it means? As you can see here in browser we have our base URL slash users. And this is exactly it. It uses our base URL and at the end we are getting slash users. This is our query users. And by default we are getting here a get request because we didn't provide anything. And here we defined a minimum configuration that we need for Redux query. Also additionally from this API slice we want to get our hooks. This is why here we can write export const and we want to get from our API slice use get users query and this is from API slice, which actually means inside our API slice we have lots of different methods. And one of them is use get users query. This is exactly a hook that we can use directly in our component to fetch data from the API. Also here I must mention that we don't need to do any changes inside our index.js. Here we still are using provider from Redux like we did previously, but we must a little bit tune our store. This is why let's open our store. Here typically we have just reducer property and inside we registered our reducers reducer. But here we don't use this anymore because we completely removed this user slice. We don't need it. But what do we need instead? What I want to import here is our API slice that we just created. And we're importing it from features slash API slash API slice. Now here we can register API slice dot reducer path. And just to remind you, we set it directly to the key API. And here inside we are providing API slice dot reducer. This will just register the whole reducer from the RTK query in this specific property. Additionally, we want to add middlewares from RTK query to the RTK middlewares. And for this we can provide here a property middleware. And here we are getting a function with just one parameter, get default middleware. And we want to return a call of get default middleware dot concat. So we want to concatenate it with our API slice dot middleware. This one line will add all middlewares from RTK query to all our default middlewares. So now we're fully prepared to update our component. 
This is why I want to jump back inside our users.js and here first of all let's remove this patch, we don't need it anymore, use selector because we won't work with Redux directly, I want to comment out this dispatch inside that user, we will update it later and we don't need to fetch our data inside use effect like we did previously. What I want to do now, I want to use this hook that we got from our API slice. This is why here we can just get, for example, data from our hook use get users query. And actually for this we must remove the imports on the top, we don't need anything except a few state, but we must import use get users query from our API API slice. And here we don't provide anything inside, but we simply call it. And as you can see here, I directly destructured data back. And here I can get much more. For example, we can get here is loading, is error, is fetching, error, and much, much more. So let's write here console log and check what we are getting. So here I will provide data, is error, is fetching, is loading. But here is a small problem. We are not ready for now to render users. This is why we are getting an error, users is not defined, just for now I want to mock users and render them as an empty array. With this code we won't get an error inside browser. Now let's reload the page, we don't have any errors and let's open now our console. And as you can see here, this is what we are getting. We are getting here undefined, false, true, true, undefined. What is this? This is our data. By default, we are getting data undefined, false, we don't have an error, is fetching true because we started fetching on initialize. After this, we have is loading, also true. And at the end, we have our error undefined. And after we fetched our data, here we are getting a list of our users from the backend. And we are getting false, false, false because we are not loading anything and we don't have any errors. And there is more to that. We can open our Redux here on the right. And as you can see here, we are getting some requests. And first of all, we are getting our in need. After this, we have middleware registered. This is from RTK query. And after this, we have two requests. First of all, execute query pending and fulfilled. And this is happening directly inside of RTK query without any code from our side. Now let's check the state. And here we have just a single property API and all this stuff inside we didn't provide. This is fully RTK itself. And here we are interested inside our queries. And here we have our query get users. Here we can see the status pending, our endpoint and so on. This is all internal information. But if we will jump to fulfilled action, you can see that inside get users we are getting now data. And this is exactly data that we got from the backend. And all this data is available for us through this hook directly inside our component without any particular code from our side inside reducer. In fact, we are not writing reducers at all on our own. Now let's update our component to render users from this data property. And as you saw, data by default was undefined. This is not good for us, this is why we must set it by default to an empty array. We don't need all this code. And actually we are not using for now all these properties like is loading, is error, is fetching and error. Sure, we can use them, but it is not mandatory. So here we just have our data and we can write data.length and here on the bottom data.map. As you can see, after our page reload, we are fetching all these users from the backend and here is our request to the API. As you can see here, we have users request on our local host 3004 slash users and this is exactly because we specified it inside our API slice. But now you can compare how less code we are writing with RTK query in comparison to our own code. We simply didn't write the whole reducer for our user slice and now it is just managed through these endpoints. And additionally to that we are getting lots of stuff like for example caching and invalidation which we will implement later. But we just did half of our project, this was getting of the users, but we didn't implement creation. This is why here let's add a new endpoint which will handle creation of the user. And for this let's write a new property which will be create user and we are getting here also a builder. And actually what we want to call here is not query but dot mutation because we want to make a change. And now inside as previously we are getting query. 
but here we are not just providing a single string because we want to provide such things like body, method, this is a post because we are creating, and so on. This is why here we are getting a name and here we are returning an object. Now inside we can first of all provide a URL, in our case it will be users, then our method, it will be post, and we can provide our body, and actually our body is directly a name. And now you might ask, okay, from where is coming this name? At the moment when we will use this create user hook inside our component, we must throw a name of the user inside this hook. And this name will get here inside our query and we can use it inside our body. And actually this is everything that we need to do in order to implement creation of the user. This is just these five lines of code. But now here we want to the structure use create user mutation. And as you can see here we have a special notation, first of all use, because it is a hook, then we have the name of our key, and at the end this is mutation and not a query. Now let's open our component and here on the top I want to import not only use get users query but also use create user mutation. Now here on the top we must get a new function create user and this is a function that we are destructuring from our use create user mutation, which actually means we are not using this function directly inside our add user function. This is a hook and we are getting back some properties. For example, here as a first argument we are getting our create user, but as a second we are getting here some options. For example, as you can see we are getting here is error, is loading, is success, and we can also use this information if we need to. But for now we simply need create user that we want to call and make an API call. This is why here inside our add user we don't need dispatch, we can simply write create user and provide inside our input value and this is exactly the name which I mentioned previously. Let's check if it's working. We didn't make any other changes, we just jump to the console and we type our user, for example foo. I'm hitting here add user and as you can see we don't see our user in the list and this is totally normal. But here inside network we can see our post request. So our user was created and inside our Redux we can see that. Because actually here we are executed mutation, this is pending and here it is fulfilled. Which actually means we did everything correctly. But now we are coming to the question, ok this is all good, we created our record, but why we don't see it in the list? And this is exactly because we have a caching. And you might ask now, ok, but how caching is working inside a TK query? And the main idea is that we are caching everything by URL. Which actually means here this data was cached and we didn't invalidate this specific URL. And the easiest solution for our problem is after we are creating a new user, we want to refetch the whole list of the users. And in order to do that we must invalidate tags, how it is working. We must jump inside our API slice and here we have endpoints. What we can do now here we can provide tag types and here we just create some tags which are just normal strings. We can simply write here foo but in our case I would write here users with big u letter. And actually here you can define how many strings you want. But what we want now to do here, we want to define tags. This is why here, ok, we have get users request and now after our query we can use provides tags. And inside we can simply provide an array of tags users. Which actually means we are getting here data which is related to tag users. This is totally fine. But now we can use this users tag to invalidate them. This is why here inside our create user after our query here we can write invalidates tags. And actually we are using it to invalidate some tags. And when we are invalidating something we will refetch it. This is why here we are providing users and it means that after we created a user we want to invalidate this users tag and this request will be made again. Let's check if it's working. I will jump to the browser, reload the page and here let's create our bar user. I'm hitting here add user and as you can see here is our user on the bottom. Why it happened? Because actually here inside network we can see additional request. Here is our post request to create a user and after this we have a get request to update the whole list of the users. And here is our Redux, we have our pending and fulfilled mutation which triggered our query to get the list of data again. 
As you can see here, RTK Query is really a versatile tool where we are writing much less code. And actually, if you are still not familiar with Redux Toolkit or you want to see how to convert our basic Redux application to Redux Toolkit, make sure to check this video also.